Welcome to the Stream 6 Academy Podcast, where we focus on the real day-to-day -day efforts of streaming, being a successful content creator, a successful streamer, and just a successful person, a successful human. Whether you're just starting to stream or you're established out there in the scene somewhere and you're looking for ways to grow your community, this is the place to be. We got a lot of experience that we're going to be sharing with you uh, throughout this season, this first season. A lot of cool guests are going to be on the show with different expertises, expertisings. Uh, which is a new word that uh, is copyrighted by Stream6, so don't use it without paying 25% royalty. Stream6 is an indie developer and platform looking at ways to deepen the relationship between viewers and streamers, content creators, and the audience. So uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. I'm your Season 1 host, Bax, in conversation with my co-host, Camera Tim, otherwise known as Tim Seneker. What is up, my friend? Hello, hello, everyone. This is I'm I'm already excited where this podcast is gonna go. Like after that conversation we have with Dreezy, like it <laughs> there's oh my goodness. I, I we got so much good good conversation out of that that this like you guys have no idea what's coming up. It's gonna be insane. It's it's so good. The conversations here are. I mean, I I've kind of already been mentioning, and I'll probably say it's like if you have bingo for this podcast. Uh, if I say <laughs> in the trenches, you know, go ahead and pop that spot. But but I feel like what this podcast is going to do <laughs> is it's going to be in the trenches. This is this is not about being up on top. This is about what it's you know. This is the advice and challenges you're going to be going through in a world that is basically consuming itself with content creation a hundred percent i mean we and and again we all come from various different backgrounds i mean even last time when we were talking with dreezy we had all had very different experiences and very different ways we approach content creation in general but just the way we approach our lives is very different so i think this podcast is going to be a great representation of how we as human beings can connect better with each other understand our differences understand how to come alongside of each other and really mm. discover new and better ways to achieve our goals um whether that's mm. in yeah. your career or personally um there's a lot of different ways that we could we could go about doing all of this but um yeah, I'm I'm excited for what this is gonna bring out in yep. uh, not just us, but in everybody else. Like we want to be able to learn from people that we're talking to as well. So, <laughs> right? No, it's very true. And and to that point, like everybody is an important part of the conversation. Like everybody, you you listening right now, you may be watching this. If we made a video version of this, uh, if uh, you know. Whatever it is that's on your mind, we want you to reach out to us. Uh, you can reach out on Twitch, Stream6 underscore official. Uh, you can reach out to us on any of the social media platforms, uh, the Discord community. Let us know your thoughts on the episodes, on the information. Ask questions that you want us to talk about. Live Q&As are going to be a thing in the future, so we really want your feedback, and we would love to, uh, to hear from you guys. Uh, that being the case... Welcome to episode number two. Last week, we were live from Toronto, Canada, and we had an awesome conversation, as Tim mentioned, with Dreezy, who you've seen on the stream. Um, and this week, uh, we are going to be moving from the branding and identity that we were talking about as content creators. We're moving towards just setting up. Now, this might like like the difference here is Tim and I are going to be talking about like Tim. Tim, I think, has set up like a camera on the moon before. Like the dude is he's out Not there. Quite. I think We're he's almost at, there. You're almost there. But almost you, there. OK, what's between the moon and the earth uh, space? <laughs> Remind me never to ask Tim an open ended question ever again. <laughs> ever again. That's what I get. That's yeah, what I get. Yeah, you you opened yourself up for that. Yeah. yeah. Space. Jeez. <laughs> um so I mean Tim as a as a as an expert on lighting, production, hardware, software, you name it, uh you know, this is going to be a place where a lot of people are going to get some really good advice. But more importantly, a lot of people might be sitting here being like, I don't even know. like yeah, streaming seems fun, but I have <laughs> no idea what to do. Do I just download the software? And click a button in your life the answer is yes but then it's all but then like past that past that like initial step you know what do we do like as far as you're concerned if there's somebody right now who wants to stream they're here and they want to stream and they have no idea what the first steps are like what what would you say like what are the first steps for somebody who's interested in getting into the world of content creation yeah i think the first thing is to well the, first, the very first thing i want to make sure i do is to set expectations correctly because 
your first stream is not going to be a high production quality stream. It's not going to be. Mm, yeah. uh, mm. So I, I don't want people to feel like they're going to be overwhelmed by the amount of stuff that they have to get to be able to stream. Like, that's not the purpose of creating mm. content. Like, I think yeah. we even referenced it last time where uh, all the equipment is just a tool to be able to achieve a great, greater common goal. Um, so the very first thing is just like set your expectations with what your budget is currently um but also use what you have now to create better content later is i think was that that was like the quote that i ended with uh, which mm, is a great mm-hmm. transition into this week ta-da uh, <laughs> well done. i did that like I, I was planning that the whole time uh Dude, definitely. the three hours of practice before the show paid off <laughs> <laughs> absolutely <laughs> yeah um, uh-huh. but yeah so like the as far as actually starting out the the key thing is it's like what do you have and what can you start working with? Because mm. I think the biggest mistake that most people can can get into um, or that, that can make actually is uh, purchasing a bunch of equipment they don't know how to use and don't realize that they don't actually need uh, because they see other streamers using it. Um, mm. There's a lot mm. of false advertising. I don't want to say false advertising, but there's a lot of um, people talking about like, this is the camera you need or this is the audio that you need this is the lighting Rem. that you need and of course Rem. i'm going to tell you like what you should get um but <laughs> right um, right but there's a side of it that uh like for your it's almost like just, a fad right like, yeah, like there's it's, like, it's like 100% the hottest fad. thing to have yeah here's the right. here's the thing if you get this your stream automatically becomes better to right. You know, and that's, and and that's, that's the not. biggest right and that's the biggest fallacy in streaming is Rem. if you have this tech you will be a better streamer that's the right. complete opposite mindset you have to have going into well not even just streaming but just any sort of content creation is it's it's not mm. about the tools it's about the creator that uses the tools mm. Mm. and that and that's a really and that's a really good point like this is actually about the way in which you utilize these things and, and we can even talk about like uh i mean something that we haven't really you know set this up for i mean i mean like I, i've been streaming for a long time i went full time about a year and a half ago about two years now actually a little over two years ago um just into content creation so now that's what i do like for a living but up to that point i mean there was about i think like five or six years of of just making a mess of things i mean it was it was disgusting i don't even want to look at some of the stuff that yep, I that same. I used to do be, but but at the time at that time that's all I could do you know right. it's 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 never we we've mentioned this before and I think you even mentioned it uh, in our last episode but not comparing your uh your behind the scenes to everyone else's highlight reel like everybody yeah. is is out there just getting dirty with these uh programs and the software the key is to take small steps forward if you can in small pieces and just keep building one small step at a time nothing there isn't that one moment that just suddenly everything becomes clear it's just this uh it's this continuous organic process of growing in what you're doing and how you're learning and being open to that is important it's important to to never think that you know everything you can you can know a lot (laughs) of stuff but always know there's room to grow I mean, right. I, I swear right now there's nothing that Tim could say he doesn't know how to do. Uh, and, and there's yet, a lot. There's a lot. Trust yeah. Me there see, is. look, I told you. I used, dude, thank you. You, you set my punchline home and it feels it feels good. It feels good. <laughs> yeah, you always got to have that learning mindset, right? Oh, always yeah, have that learning always mindset. Do, no, that, 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 lear, that learning mindset never stops. I think that's the key thing. Like Even somebody like Roger Deakins, one of the most accomplished cinematographers mm. to ever live, yeah. Still has stuff to learn every single day. And I think that's the mindset you want to be in. It's like learning is not a bad thing. The fact that you have to learn more than some other people that have been doing it for a lot longer is not a bad thing. Mm. And that's right. the that's the biggest right. appro- that's the biggest approach that we all need to to be able to take. Um, yeah, to be able to like just get started and then like make mistakes, do mm. it wrong, so that you can do it better later. Right. Right. And the, and the point, the the reason, the reason that at least like uh, from my perspective, the reason uh, we're discussing this and bringing this up is because when you're thinking about getting into streaming, setting up your stream, wanting to be in content creation, it's important never to pay attention to the things that are going to be marketed to you by a lot of different people looking to make money or looking for their own exposure or their own networking and connection that say, if you do this, you will do better. It's right. more to say, have a learning mindset. So if we, you know, Tim is definitely going to be, 
you know, talking about some hardware in this episode, later in this episode, that will really help people get a good start. But he's not doing that as a means of if you don't do this, you know, you have failed. He's doing it in a sense that's like, hey, as far as getting started goes, make decisions that are in the space of learning, best practice, meet yourself where you're already at. What do I already have available? And that's the number one best way to set up your stream is to set it up in your head as a mental game that's going to be growing, evolving, improving. That first stream is just just get it out there. Rip yeah. the Band-Aid off. I think, I think that's the idea that, that I'm kind of talking around. There's always ways to improve your quality, not just quality yeah. of stream, but also quality of life. Um, the things that people don't see, um, mm, mm. and that could that could be something that's not tech related as well. Like that could just be something involving your mental health. Like there's always ways to improve where you're at, um, but focus on the things that are the most important in the in that current moment, which is get your foot in the door, because that's always the, the hardest part to overcome is starting. Because at, at first so you have true. no, because yeah, at first you have no idea what you're doing, like. I've been mm, like when yeah. I because and I wish I had a podcast like this or be, to be able to have the conversations like this, um, like almost 10 years ago when I first started streaming. Um, I mean, if you want to talk about my very first stream, that would technically be like 2008 or 2009 or something. It's like way back. Um, 2008? So if, yes. On you. What? Yes. You were on Ustream? Was I was, that, briefly. That was back in Justin TV days, right? Yes, that was, that like, was like before yeah, Justin. Dude, that, that was, was like out. everybody really before, be, like even before oh Justin TV was like gosh. really discovered. Like Ustream was the very first thing that a friend and I, I, feel I like, used. What? To broadcast I feel like live. I streamed on Ustream. I don't know why it's ringing a bell, <laughs> but I feel like there's a stream Maybe. out there playing some video game maybe world of warcraft or something and i'm just like oh my gosh that's blowing my mind yeah that's, anyway okay. <laughs> anyway segue aside. Stream. um yeah. so yeah but like even I, I probably wouldn't go back quite that far because we were we had no aspirations to do anything we were really stupid um mm. but mm. as uh as it pertains to like me actually starting streaming on twitch which back in actually 2015 so about eight years ago um if I had come into it with the approach that that I do now and like the knowledge I have now or the conversations that I'm able to have now um and the like I obviously I would approach it very differently but that's a that's again the side of it where everybody's coming at it from different perspectives or everybody's coming at it from a different learning point like some people it will take longer to learn than other people like some people can stream mm. for a year or two um, or really less than a year for some people and just like, boom, they just hit Twitch partner. And I've been streaming for eight years, albeit not consistently and not with huge aspirations, but like I'm not a right. Twitch partner. Again, right. that's not like my forte, but there are people that have been streaming for years and years and their view count has just kind of stayed at the same place and they don't know like what, what, like what's going on. But the, the key, the key thing I'm not trying to drive home is like, if you are not in the mindset of trying to learn to how to do better things, to better your content, to better the the equipment that you're using, to know how to use the equipment, then just like the viewer count, your content will stay stagnant. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's that's really good. And I think I think next week, you know, for community building, you know, we're going to have our, our, our next uh, episode three will be about community and about growing those things and and building those out, uh, those things that are going to help those numbers uh, rise and the different mental uh, mental perspectives that are required for that. As far as as far as this is concerned, like I'd be curious to kind of, you know, piggyback off of that and talk about uh you know, let's talk about platforms like let's yeah. like like you're right, like set up the learning mindset. Um, but then there's also a point where it's like, it's time to make a decision, right? And, and it's like, and, and making a decision, you know, what we wouldn't suggest is roll a dice and then go with it, right? No, don't, don't, you know, <laughs> right. there's, there are educated decisions to make here. So, so as far as people who want to get into content creation, you know, you got YouTube, you got Twitch, you know, kick is kicking around right now, like at least in the uh, discussion space, but there's, there's other streaming platforms. The two biggest ones though, being, you know, YouTube and Twitch, those two seem to be there. Facebook, you know, has some Facebook gaming and some live streaming as well. What are, what are your thoughts on somebody who's just looking to get into the game and doesn't really have an online platform yet like a total fresh fish a guppy that is underneath a lily pad and is looking for sunshine man what what's that what's that platform in your opinion honestly the the platform that i gravitate towards the most 
would be Twitch. And the reason being is because of the interactivity that you get there that you can't get anywhere else. Ah, what do you um, mean by that? Inter interactivity, like what? So, in terms of uh, now, discoverability is a whole nother discussion. Like, I don't even think we're going right. to be talking about discoverability today. But just in terms of being able to get started and what you're able to do on Twitch, in terms of um, how the chat can interact with you and how you can build out your stream. Um, the and again, this goes into like a little bit more of a technical thing. Um, but there's a lot more with Twitch's API that you're actually able to do. And it's, mm. it's significantly more w well built out uh, because Twitch has been existing for significantly longer than YouTube live streams. Um, so YouTube just has a lot of catching up to do. YouTube's done some positive things that in some cases are actually better than Twitch. But as an overall infrastructure, Twitch is uh, definitely the better platform. You're starting to see there's a couple people that I've talked to um, or that I've noticed that went to YouTube for a little bit to try and test the waters at least for several months or maybe even over a year and now are starting to head back to Twitch because the the things that YouTube was promising for are still have yet to be delivered on. Now in terms of like promises yet to be delivered, I think that's pretty much every platform has those issues, but in terms of YouTube, there's definitely some core elements, um, especially like interacting with chat and being able to um, like really customize your your viewing experience. Mm. Just doesn't doesn't really mm. exist. Like the the YouTube chat mm. is just very clunky at best. Mm. Um, mm. And it's and it's also in terms of visibility sake. Like I think Twitch is Twitch chat has actually done a really good job at making that very easily. Um, laid out so that everything makes sense youtube um if you want to like put the uh person's screen in like a larger view the chat all of a sudden just goes underneath the viewer and you have to like create a separate pop-out chat just to be able to like interact with the stream still and if you don't have a separate mm. monitor that becomes even more difficult so the chat layout's Yum. bad and um the uh and a lot of customizations in chat aren't that great as well I, yeah okay Okay, so so you're saying that like as far as somebody just wanting to get out there and take a shot, Twitch offers the easiest integration from desire to being live. Like those, yeah. the, the that has the shortest gap and the simplest gap uh, to to actually work through versus YouTube, where yes, there is the ability to stream and then immediately put that video, you know. As a video, you know, on your channel, and maybe that can expedite the process from recycling and reusing your content. Well, you can but even still do that on Twitch, though, to be honest. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But Twitch still allows you to do that. It may be, you know, maybe there's one extra step, but you can still do that. As far as right. the live content creation machine, Twitch, I, I think something I want to bring up, and I would love to hear your thoughts on, is is you mentioned the chat, and you mentioned the you mentioned the chat box. I think Twitch is more known for the chat box than anything else, right? The chat kind of on is. Twitch, the emotes, the uh, the memes, the ability for the chat to actually just be its own force. It almost feels like the streamer and the chat are 50-50 on, yeah. on, on a stream, you know? Like, a lot of times I'll find myself, I'm watching content, I want to see the chat. <laughs> I'm, I know this is being it's streamed, true. and like, and, I, and I'm like, what is the chat doing? How are they responding? I want to see all those pogs fly up the yeah. screen whenever <laughs> I see something really cool in a tournament or something like that. And so, to that point, you're right that Twitch offers something. If you're looking to get into this, like pulling the trigger on a Twitch stream, you you could do far like you could do far worse. Like like it, yeah. it's just it, it seems like it would be, you know, definitely the next step would be to just hop on Twitch and, and give it a go. Yep. It's it like Twitch is easily the lowest barrier to entry when it comes to exclusively live streaming um, mm, mm. compared to like, ob like obviously compared to YouTube, but there's also Facebook, you know, kick is that's a whole nother discussion. And then, right. you know, other ones that are starting to come up, there's Trovo, I think is still active. Um, mm, is right. The one that I'm blanking on the name of, but, um, but all there's a bunch of platforms that are still trying to, to come up and Twitch's infrastructure is just so integrated into the streaming culture that the best anybody can do right now is try to emulate Twitch. And YouTube's trying to do their own mm, thing, but I think that's right. where YouTube's kind of falling short is they don't ha <clears throat> they don't have the long history of 
um, in, of, in, of streaming integration because they've been a video centric platform for, I don't know, I forget the year that came out, like what, 2008 or something like that? Or Jeez, maybe, no, yeah, 2000. Like actually, no, it's been longer than that. Are you talking know. about like the, the date, like not Justin, but. No, like, no, like YouTube. I'm talking about like when YouTube first came out. It was like two, early 2000s or mid 2000s or something. Oh, like that. geez. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 2005. Like, yeah, 2005. 2005. Okay, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yep. So, but so YouTube's been a v- extremely video centric platform and live streaming is still, I would still say, in its infancy stage. Even though it's technically been a part of the platform for a couple years now, it's. It definitely feels like we're not in a polished state. It feels like it's a beta test. That's so crazy to me. Like, like I, like I mean, there are people who have grown up. Like at this point, I mean, <laughs> 2005 was 18 years ago. Yeah, <laughs> people like, like it's it's nuts to me to think that you know people people are here and YouTube has been a part of their life from day. One, it's not yeah, something that was true. ever, yeah. Like, like I remember when YouTube. I'm like, what on earth is this? And it only took a couple of years before you know everybody's just on YouTube. You know, it's everything yep. is over there, and and there's competing platforms that are coming up and then vanishing. And yeah. let's let's compete. Can't can't keep up. Let's compete. Can't keep up. Uh, I think something about Twitch that you bring up that's that's uh, that that is important is that twitch offers like there are a lot i mean we could talk about mixer right mixer was <laughs> was up and they said okay let's go for this let's shoot our shot and twitch was too stable and overwhelming of a force to to have competition like pressed on it or forced yeah. on it because mixer was like let's just take a bunch of money we're going to throw all this money at some really big names we're going to bring them over and that'll help us fight twitch but what they recognized i will give mixer credit what what they recognized is to get people to compete with twitch we have to have the numbers our numbers are too low and our momentum is too slow so let's bring over these names let's put money into this because this is like the final shot let's see what we can do so i mean that's something to think you know that's something to consider as far as um as far as these other platforms that are popping up as well if you want to go with one of these other you know a little more niche or maybe there's established platforms out there i don't know if it's, uh, it was a zubu I don't know if a Zubu is uh, still going uh, or like a smash cast. I remember smash cast TV. I'm just trying to think of like, I'm trying to yeah. think of like some other ones, well, but if you want to go, well, if you want to go for those. Yeah. What's up? What's up? Well, I was just going to, I kind of wanted to bring it back. No, full, I want to talk full circle. No, okay. Go ahead. Go. <laughs> no, okay. Sorry. 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 Now everybody just stopped listening. Cause they're like, this is the most annoying thing ever. Okay. <laughs> no, go ahead. What's up? All right. So I just kind of wanted to bring it back full circle. Cause you mentioned something interesting, how mixer, tried something and they and they failed and it ended up costing them everything i think they took the mm, the mm. wrong approach which bringing it back to because uh, i want to eventually bring it back to technology is going to be a bit of a segue but it all comes right, back, right. I, I promise um but what mixer tried to do was throw numbers and money into a problem and i think that the biggest mistake that you can make is throwing money at something and hoping for numbers and hoping to get a result out of that. Mm. And the key and the key thing I want to focus on is that numbers and money are not the driving force for anything. It's not it's never the leading um subject matter for how content is the how content is king and how you can better yourself uh from a personal and professional standpoint. Numbers and money will always be the what comes from your effort and your works, which is why I think Mixer wasn't lasting because they didn't put the work into the platform. They just tried to throw a bunch of names and numbers into something, hoping for the a reta- a retention and a return. Uh, but the retention wasn't there because it was never really implemented. Um, so coming full circle into mm-hmm. how you can start your mm-hmm. content creation career is like, again, throwing money into a bunch of tech and throwing money and hoping for numbers and hoping for retention and hoping for a return is not going to do anything in and of itself. All that stuff will come when you put the effort into yourself and put the effort into your community, which I'm really excited to talk to Spoo about and see what his, uh, yeah, his no take joke. is on his uh, next, uh, next episode because uh, that's going to be a fascinating one. Um, but being able to uh, recognize that um, 
all of the stuff around yourself is there to support what you do. It's not there to be the foundation for what you do. Mm. If that makes any mm. sense. It does. It does. I think I think that's really important. I think the idea is if you were to I mean, this is this is kind of like a bit of a wishy washy hypothetical. But the, the idea is that somebody who is successful in something, typically uh, it would work out that if you were to take that person, take them back to square one and tell them to build it again, they would they would have all the tools as a person and as an entrepreneur to be successful maybe not to the same level maybe not to the same energy maybe not to the same whatever but i mean i mean there was the experiment that uh ludwig did right and and right, he, yeah. he, he built a second channel and he just wanted to prove the point and yes the channel like regardless of the content regardless of what you think of the content or anything he said i'm going to start out with a channel that is at zero it is a fresh guppy and i'm going to show that i can get this to 1 million subscribers boom did it. I mean, it took, <laughs> I, I can't remember how long it took, but he treated it like a business and then just rode the analytics forward in getting a YouTube channel up to 1 million subscribers. Uh, yes, he has tools. Yes, he's able to, you know, rely on a whole bunch of resources that the average person can't rely on. But the point that's the, the point is that you yourself are the resource. Right. Everything else is something that is going to be able to help you. So what, whether that's a microphone, a camera, a cool little soundboard thing, uh, an audio mixer, a stream deck, a, editing this, a drawing pad, what, whatever it is, these are all things that are just going to take you as a person and as a content machine, and they're going to enhance your ability to be a content creator. When you think of yourself as a content creator, what do you see? Do you see yourself having a bunch of people laughing at a moment in which you're playing a game? game, then that's something where you're going to want to take tools and you're going to want to apply them into that specific thing that you're going for. Are you somebody who wants to just make art and show people these really cool, the really cool process in which you create a lifelike rendering of the little mermaid VHS cover? I don't know. I'm just like, <laughs> right, like whatever it is, like having, having the idea, if, if I like, I'm, I'm a commentator, right? Like that's my background in content right. creation is, is commentary and, 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 and that kind of idea if i were to buy like a fishing pole that i like is is a digital fishing pole yeah i don't know if that's real but if it is can i have one <laughs> if i were to buy a digital fishing pole you'd be like i don't understand that purchase and i would say i agree this doesn't help my commentary in any way it just it's here and i own it uh that's a very extreme example but every single thing that you're getting should try to like enhance when you're making decisions don't make them because it looks shiny Make right. the decision because <laughs> it will help something you're doing improve and be better. Yeah. And that accrues over time, right? Yeah. There's there's two different ways to look at this, too. Like, you could look at yourself now and look at yourself 10 years down the road. Or you can look at, you know, I myself could like look at myself now and look at myself 10 years ago and say, I could be given the same tools at two different times. And because in one area, like now... As opposed to 10 years ago, I know significantly more than what I did 10 years ago. Those same tools will have a significantly different impact on my content just mm. because of how mm. I know how to use them. So, and then there's the mm. flip side yeah. of it where you can give the same tools to two different people at the same time and you'll get completely different results out of both of them. It's so true. Okay, this this is okay. So just to just to make, I, I guess what I'm seeing here is a lot of good information we've been talking about, and we can coalesce into this idea that if you have anxiety about making decisions, uh, you can you can rest assured that you like everybody else either is having the same anxieties or has to push through the same barrier that says eventually you make a choice. And that choice is, I'm going to buy a stream deck. Or if you don't, it's like, okay, I won't buy a stream deck. Or if you buy a stream deck, you're going to use it differently than the person who sold you on using the stream deck in the first place. The person who <laughs> right. got me to buy a stream deck, they used it for X reason. And then I have the stream deck. I'm not doing anything similar to what they're doing with the stream deck, even though that's why I bought it. I bought a stream deck <laughs> because I wanted to do what they were doing. And then I got it and I didn't do anything that they were doing. Right. So tr <laughs> trust yourself, right? I guess that's the idea. Yeah. Like like these anxieties about making decisions in hardware and software for getting into streaming are understandable. Everybody goes through them. At right. the end of the day, make that choice and then learn. 
Make the choice, learn. Decide, learn. Decide, learn. Rinse and repeat, and then move forward. Yeah, Onwards. seize the opportunity. Yeah. Seize the opportunity. Carpe the opportunity. Yeah. Is that is that <laughs> Car- right? I think it's like what carpe diem? Is that what it is? I caught a carpe with my digital fishing rod uh, <laughs> last last week. <laughs> it was so yeah. bad. I, I it came, dude, it, the joke ran across how my l- brain, and I said, "I'm going to go for it." <laughs> how long did it take to download? <laughs> it was oh my goodness, there too long, go. yeah, too okay. long. <laughs> yeah, no, it was an NFT, and uh, you know, and it just it <laughs> the <laughs> NFT carpe that you have to, uh, yeah, you have to get with the digital fishing pole. That is also an <laughs> NFT. So anyway, um, okay, uh, so what I'd like to what I'd like to segue segue into at this point. Uh, uh, I, I'm curious, and I'm sure the listeners are also curious, uh, especially the ones who are like, yo, what do I do? Um, what is the number one thing? This is, ugh, what is the number one thing? Video, audio, lighting, bagels. What's the thing that Camera Tim uh, says you should focus on for your stream initially to improve? Coffee. Uh, no, the number one thing would That's, be. I'm sipping right now. Homie. <laughs> there you I'm, go. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm sipping. I'm sipping. Yeah. If you got, if you got the energy, you're ready to go. Um, mm-hmm. No, the the most important thing in terms of your. Well, I mean, okay. There's a couple of different ways we could uh, we could talk about this, but in terms of just you presenting yourself, the biggest thing is you need good audio. I would say say even that be, one say that one more time for the people in the back who might think it's video. You need good audio, video yeah. people, myself included. Uh, the reason I bring up audio um, over like your gameplay, over what software you should use, what camera you should, lighting you should use, is because if you ever been to, I don't know, you've been to a movie theater, or somebody's like projector screen or whatever, or just like watch TV or something, and the audio goes out, and you're watching something with no sound and you know assuming there's no subtitles of course um mm-hmm. and you're watching it and you just have no comprehension of what's going on you can't understand like what they're saying what the conversation is like what you can't feel any atmosphere around you you're just seeing moving images on a screen now take that same scenario and imagine the video goes out well you can still hear all of the immersiveness of the piece or whatever you're watching you can hear the conversations being had. You can hear sound effects. Um, in some aspects, you could even picture it better than the visual was trying to display because you can hear atmospheric elements that give you some sort of familiarity with what the scenery is um, is around you. Um, so anytime you want to know like what's the, the number one thing you need for a stream is good audio. Because you could watch somebody that has like the highest end camera, like with an Ari Alexa or something, streaming with an Ari, and sure. they could have terrible audio quality, and that stream will be unwatchable. Mm. Conversely, mm. you could mm. have like this twenty-year-old webcam. I don't even know if tw- webcams were like how big they were twenty years ago. I should know, but um, <laughs> like you can have a like, webcam from twenty years ago or something. Use a laptop webcam. But if you have really good audio, it's significantly easier to still be engaging with your audience with a trash webcam, but you sound really good because people can at least be immersed in that. And it's some, mm. and it's something where people don't even necessarily need to be watching you visually. They right. can just listen to you and yes. you'll be able to make content from that. So the mm. number one thing is have good audio. Now, in terms of what mics... There's a number of ways we could go about this, but I think there's uh, two key elements um, that you need to consider when looking for a microphone. One, what type of room are you in? What's your setting? Like, what's your setting? What's your room? um, And what are you working with in terms of sound treatment? If you don't have sound treatment, um, then we look at the the second Sound treatment. Hold on. For those who might not... Like, it sounds like you're, like, a, you know, trying to put, like, what is it? Like, salt in the water softener. Yeah. And it's like, you, you need to put, like, you need to fill your room with salt. So the sound, what do you mean by sound yeah. treatment? Okay, yeah. So sound treatment can be anything that dampens audio, reverbs, or echo. Basically, like, mm, anything mm. that makes it sound like you're in a large hallway or something where it's just endless echo and it just, 
it's really distracting. Um, sound treatment can be anything from um, carpets instead of wood floors, or you have um, couches or mattresses in your room that that help dampen the audio. And then in mm, some cases, yeah. like mine is, you can if you're watching this, uh, I have acoustic panels that I built that are set up in my office um, mm. that help take away some echo as well. Um, so basically, anything that can dampen audio um, would be considered sound treatment in my book cool if somebody's just interested like in a microphone just like a without any regard to variables an entry-level budget microphone for somebody audio is the number one thing they need to care about like what is the microphone or maybe a couple mics that you would suggest looking into there's a couple but i think the biggest one um in terms of simplicity for use um and especially because I've had people get this one because I needed it to be simple to use, would be the Samsung Q2U. And What'd you call me? The, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the Samsung Q2U, it's S-A-M-S-O-N, and then the letter Q, number two, letter U. The reason I suggest that microphone is because typically you can actually find pretty good bundle deals with it, um, but it's a USB and an XLR microphone. Mm, so let's say mm. you wanted to start out with just bare bones, simplistic thing. You want a microphone that you can just put on your desk, plug into your computer, it's ready to go. You can do that with this mic. And it's it's uh and then I'll get into the difference between like dynamic and condenser mics because that is an important distinction, but um we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh but this mic also has an XLR input, so let's say you're ready to upgrade your audio so you want to have an actual interface, you want to have different dials and like buttons that you want to be able to, to upgrade with and, and play around with, you can get that without even having to upgrade your mic. So for uh, six, right. so, so for like sixty to eighty dollars or something, you can get a mic that sounds really good that you can just plug and play that comes with several other features like a little mic stand uh depending on the bundle you can get an arm it has the cables it has a pop filter um and you're able to and it, again you could there's bundles that come with headphones as well so you can grab all of this for like 80 bucks and you have a really good audio setup that's just ready to go regardless mm. of almost regardless of what you're i don't want to say regardless of your environment or what your setting right. is um, because yeah. it still matters but it will be one of the best starting points, if you if you are just starting from scratch and you have nothing that um, that works really well, that's probably what I would recommend the most. Just to kind of reiterate, like the idea here to, to combine what you've just offered and then to also, you know, kind of bring in what we talked about earlier. If you have, you know, if you have a like a clip microphone that's five dollars from the Walmart bargain bin, like rock and roll, you know, like yeah. just sing your heart out into that sucker and go with it. And then look, it, it's more to say that when you are able to get that budget, you know, make this, you know, and this is something we're going to talk about in a future episode. I think it's episode four, episode five. Where we're going to be talking about uh, monetizing a donation subscription, setting up third party right. software and programs, Patreon, Discord, you name it. Um, but set up you know donation goal that says hey you know once we hit that 60 80 dollar range like you're mentioning you know this is the first thing we want to upgrade let's get that quality up there yeah. um and let's you know yeah let's just kind of take it take it up to a next level uh yeah. something else I, I thought about like really randomly uh just to touch on when you're talking about audio uh is like like video video is always intended like almost, <laughs> almost always intended to have audio. There are examples where it is not like an advertisement in New York Times Square, right? Like like something right, right. like there, there are places where there isn't going to be audio. But for the most part, video is supposed to have audio. You don't have just like video for video's sake, like a visual just for the sake of the visual. However, you do have audio for the sake of audio almost exclusively throughout history. So so it's like <laughs> like when, when you're true. looking at that, like this is a time tested uh, theory here and, and philosophy that, that Tim is talking about. Um, they're really, you know, yeah, like make sure that audio is crispy. Crispify yeah. your audio. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely something you want to... Um, to look into like I, there's a couple guys that uh make a lot of really good content for audio i know podcastage um has really good resources for for one like a lot of really good resources for budget mics so um if mm. you did need something even cheaper than that 
Um, like this mic that I'm using, I bought this one for actually $15. Now, that's mm. to say that I, it was just the mic. So I got like extra parts on it um, and an interface um, and, a, and, a, and a whole stand for it. So Oof. it was more like I think the microphone was like the cheapest part of it. <laughs> oh, geez, Ironically yeah. enough. Um, but that's, that is to say like I've... I've surrounded myself with people that know a lot more about audio than I do because I'm not an audio engineer by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I just know enough to be dangerous. Um, but I that's, love that phrase. Yeah. I'm using that for the rest of my life. <laughs> wow, well, I know enough to be dangerous. Yep, exactly. Oh, so good. Um, but yeah, like the, I think you know, bringing this back full circle, um, audio is like the the number one thing you want to get good first. Um, mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. if you, if your audio is bad, your retention will be bad. Mm -hmm. That's like the number mm -hmm. one thing. Right. Unless you're someone like that brands themselves with bad audio. I mean, like Tyler one's an example, but so like, I, right. I think that's another thing to mention yeah. just a quick segue. There's always an exception to the rule, but the key to being an exception to the rule is knowing what those rules are at first and how to yes. break them effectively. Yes. So you can't just go into it as like, ah, I don't really want to follow that. I'm just going to kind of do my own thing and just hope it works. No, you have to know why you're breaking the rule in order to be able to do it. That, that's so good. And this is something I like. It, I can't reiterate that enough. And a lot of times I'm somebody who has to learn things the hard way. It's I, I've tried <laughs> to not learn things the hard way. And then I learned the hard way that I have to learn the hard way. It's it's frustrating that I I had to go meta with my own learning process. But I, I have a I have a. Um, uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts from uh, Boise State University. I graduated in 2012, and through that, through the through a lot of those studio courses, I would try to like shortcut of it. You know, I try to be like, eh, you know, I know what the rules say, but I think this is cooler. And it took me three and a half <laughs> years to get to the point of realizing I'm learning these rules not so that I spend the rest of my life um, using them, but so that when I choose to not adhere to the rules, I know why. Right. Uh, and that and that's a big thing in streaming and content creation because there is no barrier to entry in content. None. For somebody listening right now who has never streamed, you could take the advice, you could go over to Twitch, you could click the make an account button, you could go to the streaming software and click <laughs> go, and you could be streaming. There's no barrier to entry for this. Right. It is all the tools are free. Everything is just open open book. So that being the case. You know, you can you can say, oh, well, I don't need to follow any rules. And sure, you'll just end up learning the hard way. The goal here for this in this discussion is to say, let's help you. Let's help you not have to learn as hard as others need yeah. to. Or at least there's like, you know, yeah. Yeah, there's definitely going to be areas, especially in your content career, or your, just your growth in general, that are going to be challenging. Um, but the biggest thing that we want to supply you with is the confidence to be able to face those challenges and realize that, just because it's a challenge, it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Just because it's hard doesn't mean you can't overcome it. Just yeah. because you don't have the knowledge now doesn't mean you can't have it later. Like there's there's mm. always ways to learn. Um, yep. And like is again, I think I mentioned this last time, but I I'm always learning. I'm constantly growing myself. I'm trying to learn something new every single time I go out and shoot something or or do a live stream like there's with always a camera to be clear with, with a camera <laughs> <laughs> i mean i shot a gun before in a shooting range i was pretty bad but just, but... <laughs> I'm just, you know yeah yeah that's that's why i want to make sure you know it's uh, with yeah, a camera yeah, with guns a are not my thing um <laughs> <laughs> We uh, are suddenly going to change the topic of the yeah. podcast. We're now going to be, this is, yep. uh, this is. But, uh, but anyways, let's go. <laughs> We're getting back to the rule set here. Um, knowing when to break rules, I think is pretty key because, um, if, if you look at example, like let's, let's take practical examples of when this is utilized. So like there's, instead of just blanket statement, like know when to break rules, like you have to know the rules to know when to break them. That's, uh, like practical examples. I think the easiest one to point out. Um, in terms of cinematography is um, if you know anything about photography or videos and you've heard of the term rule of thirds, that's the idea that you yeah. have like three sections um, on your uh, in your composition or your frame uh, that you you break up uh, f pieces so that like one end can lead to the other and stuff. There's a, there's a lot of like complex stuff, but basically just think it's think of your whole frame as a tic-tac-toe board. 
And that's the rule of thirds right there. Um, so a very common thing you see in, in any normal interview that you watch ever, whether it's on the news, whether it's like a formal interview, whether it's two people talking to each other, um, the rule of thirds is almost always implemented in a very standard way where, let's say, your subject is on the right side of the frame, they're facing towards the left side of the frame. Um, that's pretty much how you always see interviews conducted. And then a good example of that rule being broken, like let's say you you have a very tense moment or a tense scene that you're shooting um, or a very tense moment in, just in general, and you have the person on the right side of the screen, but they're facing right. And then that leaves a lot of things behind them in negative space and it looks like they're looking into the edge of the frame and it feels uncomfortable but you're not mm. necessarily consciously understanding why but it fits the scene so that's like an example of a rule is the rule of thirds was broken but it was done so in a way that makes sense because the artists that made it understood why they were breaking it in the first place because they wanted yeah. to create some sort of uncomfortable tension I moved. I moved my camera to try to show that. So I just shifted <laughs> my camera over. So, so anybody who's watching the actual video, you know, the video of this, but but the, you know, you can kind of see that there's a little maybe discomfort. Like that's a really awkward framing. Like why is it framed right. that way? Yeah, that's a really yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, I think that's yeah, that's a that's a really good point. The the idea. So so since we're talking about photography, since we're talking about cameras, like let's let's just talk about cameras. Like All okay, right. so you got it. You got the Q to you. Q to you too. It's there. Yep. You nailed it. There's you a couple others. There's a couple others too, but you know we put chuck them out the, there. Ch <laughs> just chuck the names. I mean, they'll be I mean, they'll be in the description. One, chuck them out there. Yeah, they'll chuck. be in the description of whatever platform you're listening on, unless Spotify doesn't <laughs> allow it. But you know, <laughs> mm. uh, but mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. the one I'm using is called the Behringer XM8500. Um, <laughs> Could they make these more? Wait, uh, dude, I'm sorry. I At some point, can, I don't can, care. Can you just call what? it the tiger. Just give no, it a mascot. Like this is the tiger microphone. There you go. Done. I will hey, always I hate naming conventions from any pla Like I don't know of any <laughs> manufacturer that's actually had naming conventions that actually make sense throughout the entirety of their products. Like sometimes there's some that are anomalies, <laughs> but it just like. What are you doing? Like, right. oh my goodness. It's Sony, crazy. Like Sony cameras, like their mirrorless line, they went from A6000 to A6300 to A6400 to A6100 to A6500. Like, that's not chronological. No. That drives me insane. No, they didn't do that. Oh, 100% they did. There's the, the, why, why would you? What? what? <laughs> There's an order. I mean, you can if you're there if you're just gonna order, arbitrarily do it, it, then just just oh, it's the over nine thousand camera. Like it is, you just yeah. go up there, just get up Naming there and go conventions crazy. Conventions will never fully make sense. Oh man. Well, what, next episode arbitrary. is gonna change. We're doing naming conventions because I, <laughs> I need to understand Q to you. You know, like that alone is kind of kind of fun to say, but the Q to you, quality to you. Never mind, I figured it out. There you go. Figured it. Out. I did it. <laughs> I did it. They should quality hire me. To you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so so the so the idea here. I mean, we mentioned software. We mentioned hardware. Let's let's like. Oh, uh, I, as, I should probably yeah, go yeah. back and say this part because I forgot to. I said I was going to mention it. And I haven't yet, and we're starting to transition to do cameras. I want to mention this about Brilliant. audio one more thing, uh, mm -hmm. because there are like I mean, there's it's more broad than this, but I'll sim simplify it in the sense that there's two different types of mics, uh, specifically for streaming. Um, so I want to talk about the quickly talk about the difference between condenser and dynamic mics. Um, because I mean, that's a hot topic of like, should I get a condenser? Should I get a dynamic mic? The key difference between them, um, is that condenser mics are, they, they require, external power and they are usually used for sound treated areas because they pick up a lot more of your surrounding space but if you do have sound treatment or your your room is very well padded condenser mics typically work better because it allows your voice to be more clear it picks up a lot more clarity in your voice because that's what condensers were designed for mm. like if you go into any voiceover studio they will all, almost always be condenser mics. Um, mm. What I mean by they require power is if they're if you're ever using a device that has what's called phantom power, um, that's what it requires because uh, condenser mics require power to actually work and actually capture audio. Otherwise, they can't. Um, dynamic mics work very differently. 
in the sense that they don't require any power. In fact, you shouldn't power them because that could actually damage the mic. Um, but the way Dynamics mics work, and I'm not going to get into the super nitty-gritty specifics, um, but essentially when you talk into them, there's a, a piece in there that actually vibrates, that actually creates the audio, so it's very analog-like. And that's what actually travels through into your audio and gets converted. So um, what dynamic mics are specialized in, that's pretty much what every vocalist in a concert will use because mm, it, yeah. it's, it's dynamic mics are meant to capture what's right directly in front of it and try to isolate the background as much as possible. Um, so if you're not in a sound-treated environment, a uh, dynamic mic is usually the way to go, which is why if you're starting out, the Q2U is one of my top recommendations, uh, simply because it's a dynamic mic that's very simple to plug in and get set up and and just have it work. Yeah. Okay. That that that's that's amazing. And that's that. So so the idea, like hopefully hopefully that was pretty clear. Um, but when you're looking at the Q2U, if you, if you, if that's not something that you know you're able to to go for then you know you can find something comparable but eventually the idea is flexibility in your improvement and helping yourself get the highest quality for the lowest price is like a ratio and then obviously right. down the line if you get to a point where you've crossed thresholds in all your hardware or your software and you say okay like what is the next big step you know then that's something at that point that you can research and come to but but right. it's it, it is important to to certainly know these things once again it's about learning you know, yeah. I've learned stuff about hardware that I will just, I don't even know. I don't even, I don't even know <laughs> if I'll use it, but it's a part of the atmosphere. Like right. it's, it's a part of streaming. It's part of content creation. People use these things. So you learn about it, right? Something I think it's important to at least mention, like and not even just mention, like it is important as a checklist to cover is, is the software you use to stream. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the two, I mean, there's two big ones. Both are free uh, stream. There's stream labs. And there's OBS, right? Yeah. These are these are the two that uh, and ninety technically nine. Ex, well, technically there's XSplit as well, but yeah, yeah. But I mean, I I, I gotta think ninety nine percent of people are using either. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but yeah. That's, I don't but that's I don't run point. into the, any stream. Yeah, I don't run into any streamers yeah. using XSplit. So so the the idea, like personally for me, like if, if we're just gonna like pick the one that works for you and go with it if you're looking for a lot of customization you got to go obs if you're looking for things to be a little a simpler while still having some customization options uh templates uh graphics and these kind of things stream labs is going to be beneficial for you because it, it's similar to what you were talking about as far as shortening the distance between uh going live and engagement and i think stream labs does that in a really uh simple and intuitive way whereas obs might not be quite as intuitive when you really want to get into a lot of stuff. I, I'm not going to say it's not intuitive. I found it very easy to get into. I think a lot of people do. Um, but OBS does give you the robust backend package of plugins and black, like just rabbit hole galores. I was going to say black hole, but that's like <laughs> a, no rabbit hole is what I what I want right. to say. It's not a black hole. It's a rabbit hole where you can just go down and you can get as custom as you want. Uh, Streamlabs is eventually going to have a ceiling. What are your own thoughts on like the difference between those two so you might <laughs> uh i think you know where i'm going with this but um i actually m most of the time i recommend people stay away from stream labs mm -hmm. um and the reason being is because when i at least when i look at both softwares and maybe this is just me being naive <laughs> um but i actually see them as relatively similar uh when you're first starting out um, now, there are some aspects of Streamlabs that do allow you to make it a little bit easier as a barrier of entry, but I don't, for me personally, I don't think there's that big of a difference between Streamlabs and OBS when you're just trying to get started and set something up and get started, especially because there's mm. like an incredibly mass array of tutorials on youtube that are there to help you get started with obs like it's not just to get started create your scene add a webcam and hit the start streaming button as long as you, you know connect your twitch key or youtube whatever you're streaming on um getting that stuff set up and up and running is not i think it's almost borderline the same uh between mm, both mm. between both softwares so so I think, I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, I actually tend to disagree with people that say Streamlabs is easier because like the barrier to entry mm. and at least getting started is exactly the same. So, so yeah, like, like this. Yeah, no, and that's, that's actually really 
uh, appreciate that. Uh, I will offer the pushback. Yeah, the pushback is that for Streamlabs, uh, it's it's similar, I think, uh, in a lot of the discussion between like um, uh, Apple and non-Apple. Apple has a <laughs> oh lot boy, of like, <laughs> I know, no, I'm not trying to go there and make this the podcast about that. But, but what Apple does well, like besides, you know, whatever else you want to say, is that they create a user experience that is like, if you click this button, you now get to do all this cool stuff. Uh, yeah. Streamlabs offers... Like, if you download the Streamlabs streaming software, they literally have an entire library built into the software of templates, graphics, lower mm. thirds, panels. You click a button, boom. Your entire stream is now themed just like whatever it is you clicked, and then you click go live, boom. Done. You got a webcam yeah. border. You have a bottom thing that's showing you subscribers, donations, latest follower. All of this is at the click of a button. It's not to say that you can't do that in OBS with a little bit of learning. Get stream right stream elements is something you can get you can get stream elements live uh built into OBS. All these things. It's not to say that you can't do that and that it isn't easy, but Streamlabs barrier to entry as far as wanting to customize on the front end in my opinion is way easier just because if especially if you have a couple bucks if you have a couple bucks you can literally spend like ten dollars and they'll just like automatically apply an entire professional array of graphics to something however i i would agree with you that i would recommend obs that's just devil's advocate saying that yeah. Streamlabs is an option there are professional full-time streamers out there making a lot of money using Streamlabs. It, it, th that is a path you can go down you just need to know that you will be limited. It doesn't yeah. give you, you, you can't download a cool source mirror plugin and then make yourself, you know, have, you know, recursion backwards manipulating into yourself. And then you can like make all these visual <laughs> DJ effects and stuff. Streamlabs is going to be like, nah, I want to push go live. Here's my camera. Here's my scenes. And then I want to end the stream after four hours. You know, it's going to be much yeah. more of a, you know, show up clock in clock out. Yeah. I mean, and, that's that gets into another interesting discussion on like on templating stuff. And I think templates yeah, are yeah. They have their purpose and are very valuable. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I get yeah, this because this gets difficult because I I would almost like I, again, this is just me personally, me being the the well, I guess perfectionist that I am. I mean, you're 50% um, of the show, man. It, it matters. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, so for my, so, my personal recommendation, I would, even with all the, the template stuff and the simplif simplification that Streamlabs offers and stuff, I still yeah. would never recommend Streamlabs. And mm. the reason being, um, outside of like harder specifications, how OBS utilizes it better, but that's a side, side track point, um, is that if you... If you are used to just setting everything on auto and set every, setting everything to a template, then what is your brand? Then what mm. is your mm. what is mm. your growth? Like, sure, you can. I, I don't think it's wrong to start with templating everything. Like, I don't think templates are a bad thing in and of themselves. Like, I'll I'll use templates or plugins that that people have made that like I could build them myself if I wanted to achieve this effect like whether it's an, an end editing software or whatever um but there are tools that people have made that allow you to to take shortcuts to to save time because time is a hot commodity and it is an important thing to factor in when you're doing content creation like you need to be able to maximize your time efficiency so from that standpoint i can absolutely see the appeal um I also think that you don't want to overcomplicate things early. And sometimes templates can do that because if you want to change something in a template, then you're back to square one with, are you overcomplicating things or like how difficult are you really making it mm. on yourself when you start wanting to change things because the template doesn't do everything exactly the way you want it to. Mm. Um, so are you, are you actually saving time or are you creating more time for yourself to fix things later? And if, if you're just trying to get started and you're like perfectly willing to go back and fix those things at some point when you actually have a little bit more of an experience with your streaming or just or video making, um, then by all means, like go ahead and do that if you're like willing to put in the work later. Um, just so like you can overcome that initial anxiety of like putting your foot in the door, hit the start, hitting the start uh, streaming button and actually just getting 
uh, up and running. Um, so again, like it's it's very well, it's very much um, where every single person is at in their content creation career, and how like how ambitious you are. Like you just want to go full customization, full throttle. I want to learn as much as I can and do everything myself as much as I can. Or if you're just a person that's just like, I just want to connect with people and be with people in the simplest way possible. I don't need all this other stuff. Give me those templates. Give me the easiest setup. I just want to start talking to people. Like everybody comes at their content creation from very different places and neither approach is wrong. Um, mm, mm. So again, would I recommend Streamlabs? No, that's not to say that you can't use it. That's a good way to put it. I like that. Uh, and it's it's also to say like for what it's worth, like in my streaming career, I have switched uh, from OBS to Streamlabs, and then this is before OBS Studio. Like this was when OBS Studio wasn't oh. really like out yet. So right. then OBS Studio came out. So then I switched to OBS Studio. That broke everything. I went back to Streamlabs because I liked how easy it was. I wanted to use the Streamlabs chatbot. And then I came back to OBS Studio, and that's where I've been for about you know three and a half years or so. But it's to say that you, you know everybody's got their own journey. Don't yeah don't don't fear just kind of diving in on something. If you know there's going to be work in the future. There's right. always going to be work and changes. Maybe you, you're you're doing stream labs and you're rocking it. And then you're like, oh, my gosh, I want this customization. I just saw this other streamer do. I have to go to OBS Studio to do it. Oh, my God. This is a lot. <laughs> and it's like, it's OK. It's OK. That's there are going to be projects like that constantly, you know, and, and that's something that shouldn't be a barrier to entry mentally. You know, go ahead and rip the bandaid off and, and just take it one day at a time. Um, right. And find yeah. people that can help you. Like I think that was one thing I stressed in the in the first episode was yeah. like have that accountability of people that mm. can really help you with that stuff or surround yourself with people that can um that have that knowledge. Like right. find again, we're gonna something we'll talk a lot about next week, I, I think, when we talk with Spoo is just mm. how we can better uh align with people or better build communities of people where we can actually interact and engage with each other and actually right. achieve the purpose of why we're doing this in the first place. Yes, exactly. And and there are and we have, you know, for season 1, we have episodes planned that are going deeper into streaming tricks, streaming tips, uh, things that you can do, uh, you know, we'll talk about, I mean, I guarantee we're going to talk about in that episode, a uh, customization of OBS and different oh, things yeah. in OBS that you can do to set yourself out. So people are like, wait, they're doing something different than all these other streams. What, what is that simple thing? What is that plugin you've downloaded? What is that idea that you're presenting? Um, you know, we got a uh, game selection, we have streaming strategies. We have, we have episodes that are going to be covering kind of this like you know broad stroke we're talking about right now so don't think that we're just skipping over it just know that it actually there's so much to talk about that we could we could <laughs> dude i feel like dude, we, I, at some point we should we start doing live shows because this dude, is like we, I, we just, I can't wait to see what the questions people have because uh, what questions people have because it's going to be like so great to just see like mm, we're going to get so many different perspectives of where people are at so we're going to be able to really see like how people are taking this information and and to like how we can you know better our, mm, <laughs> better our right uh services to you as well but it's just exactly i i because we back backs and i both have very limited perspectives everybody's perspective is limited to what their experience is um so being able to like really see what what comes from from all this is going to be great Actually, to, to kind of tie in, like before before I got into content, I was a coffee educator. So it was actually my job to know stuff about coffee and to train and teach people the different methods of brewing coffee, about extraction, cuppings, uh, different brewing methods, and and just, just all these things about coffee. Uh, and something I would always talk about when I was starting training any barista in coffee is that you can only taste what you've tasted. So if you have mm -hmm. grown up on a diet of, let's say, uh, pancakes and syrup. Like, let's say that's all you've eaten your whole life. First of all, don't know how you're alive, but keep rocking. <laughs> Secondly, uh, your coffee is only going to taste like pancake and pancakes and syrup. You're only going to you're going to say this tastes like really bad pancakes and syrup, but you don't have something else to compare to. So, mm -hmm. so that's something that's something like very similar to what you're saying, where you only know what you know. I we only have our experience, but these experiences actually have a lot of value. And so we're trying to take this experience that we have and say, "Yo, 
Hey, you, person out there looking to make content, looking to improve, looking to grow your community. Uh, let us take our limited perspective that still has a lot of you know weight to it and has a lot of value. And let's see if that can help you create your own perspective or widen your perspective, right? Yeah. How did I get people who, when I was training baristas, how did I get them to uh, advance their palate? Bring, I would go to the market and buy fruits and vegetables and bring them into work, cut them up into pieces and then say, let's taste this so we can understand what we're tasting. You know, so so bring it whatever it is. I bring in all sorts of stuff. We would taste it. And now you have a frame of reference for that thing. Content creation is kind of like a very a, a large interactive community of content. You're able to go out there and improve your content palette on a daily basis to see what other yeah. people are doing. I mean, that's how I find inspiration every single day for the content I'm making, for the streams that I produce, is I look at somebody else. I'm like, I can't believe they did that. I immediately, <laughs> dude, just yesterday, right? We were in the, we were in the stream and then you raided over to, uh, uh, what was Palinair. the name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You raid, and, and then they have a raid, they have a raid trigger that is this <laughs> live camera capturing anime intro rehash, and I lost it. I immediately, it I typed it in the chat. I said, I'm stealing this. And that is, <laughs> and that was my mindset. My mindset was literally not like, oh, that's really cool. I'm going to let you have that. It was, I'm, st I'm literally taking this. This is too good. The, that's it's one the kind of my of favorite idea. raid alerts I've ever seen on Twitch. Like yes, nobody's has even come close. Yeah. So a small plug for them on the, on the podcast. Congratulations. Yeah. So, so the, yeah. so, so the idea <laughs> though, is of that complex you... stuff to make for your stream. Like he's also made an interactive RPG for Twitch. Chat, yeah. Just so I mean, yeah, if we're talking about, if we're talking about the shortest barriers to entry, uh, the complexities of what they're developing is not going to be the tutorial for, uh, no, no, for, for that's, how, a, for that's for season stuff. 26, uh, that's season, <laughs> season 26. Wow. We actually have it planned out for 50 seasons just to make sure everybody knows, uh, Currently, you know, working on uh, getting some sponsorship for uh, the 50th, 49th yeah. season, actually. Sorry. Um, yeah. So, okay. So we have, so if you're going into, you know, you got, oh, like, well, let, the last thing that I think, like, really, really needs to be talked about, besides maybe, like, you know, we, we, we don't want to touch on a camera, is, like, right. content, content, like, let's, content scheduling. Like, like yeah. actually the, the schedule, like people, you know, now the last, the thing to bring this all together is when do you stream? You're, you're brand new. Do you just say, when I go live, I go live. Do you say, you know, all these deep, like what, as far as a content schedule, you know, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts about the importance of a schedule? The importance of, uh, you know what, dude, at this point, let, we're just gonna, we're gonna like, uh, just put the carrot on the end of the stick for like, what camera does camera Tim recommend? And we're just going to do it the very, very, very end. It's a last we're just thing. never, yo, yeah, we're never going to say been, it. And then at the end of the next episode, everybody. yeah, at the end of the, <laughs> end of the next episode, we're just going to, and, and Tim has been talking about cameras, but before we get to that, and then we're just going to keep going. Yeah. Episode four, <laughs> episode five, episode six, and we're never going to say the camera. It's never going to be there. It's and that's going to. And that's the test. That's going to show people you got to have confidence in yourself to make a decision and then get into the content, even if you don't have the advice. Anyway, I don't. Yeah. A um, day in my brain, man. <laughs> oh, man. It's so good. I mean, yeah. I mean, content's a lot of unknown. Um, yeah. So anyways, to get back to the question, of when it comes to scheduling, yeah. um, I think if you want to be able to start something you have to create some sort of expectations you have to create something for your audience to expect otherwise if they're not expecting anything then there's not really much room for growth um because if you if you're just one of those people that's like i'm live when i go live and kind of go at it passively people are going to come into your stream passively like you set that expectation Ooh, when you good. set your schedule when you set your, or just when you create your content in general, that that doesn't even just apply for live streaming. Like, let's say you set a specific schedule for your YouTube videos to be released. Like, your you have a specific video that comes out every Wednesday morning or something. Well, now people know that watch your content to expect something Wednesday morning, so they're waiting for that video to pop up. And like I've. I'm saying this because I ex I experience this with people that I follow on YouTube. Like, I know a video is coming out at a certain time, and I've been waiting for this because I've been hyped up on what's coming up. And you could even do this on your Twitch stream too. Is like Wednesday morning, 
this person's posting this video about this thing involving color science that I'm just fascinating about because I'm a nerd. Um, and when that video goes live, like I'm watching it all the way through. Mm. If that person mm. didn't set those expectations at the beginning to for us to know that that thing was coming out, then, you know, that video goes live. It sits around in the ether for, you know, who, who knows how long gets lost in the algorithm and you'll never see it. Oh, it's so true. It's so true. And th this even plays in like to, uh, you know, if we if we loop back to like the, the power of Twitch chat, what's really cool when you have a schedule and you stick to it is you have people showing up beforehand and they're interacting in the chat before your stream. They're saying, oh, right. I can't wait 10 minutes from now. Right. Like in the yep. programs that I run on Monday and Friday on my stream, people are there early. They know yes. that time and they are waiting. They're anticipating. They 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 know there's a guarantee that this is going to happen. I haven't seen an alert that says they're sick or that they're on vacation or anything. I am here and I'm ready to give you my attention economy like I am going to be here for this. That's yeah. the power of a schedule. So yeah. it's once it, once again, is huge. yeah, go, yeah. It's not to say that you can't like just pull the trigger and get your feet wet, but if you're looking for growth and improvement and and the, and the best practice for being a content creator, scheduling is not something to ignore. Every I would I would say besides some people that might be just too big to fail, like and they can just do whatever <laughs> they want. Right. Every single creator, every single one of them, has a schedule of when yeah. they release and how often the consistency it is not this is once again know that rule so that if you want to break it you know why you're breaking it but yep. you need to know that that is a practice for success know yep. how often you're going to stream when i started streaming it was two nights a week for an hour and a half i was streaming 12 hours a month nothing i was like it was nothing but it was consistent same nights people showed up they knew to be there and then, you know, eight years later now, right? Like I, I like people know once again when I'm streaming, where I'm going to be. And here we are, you know, where, you know, I do this full time. So, I, you know, right. Scheduling isn't an option. Yeah. yeah I mean, and I, I don't want to be like too harsh with this, but at the same time, I think it sure. needs to be said is lack of consistency creates lack of trust um, because that's a huge aspect of what you want your community to do is like trust that you deliver when you say you'll deliver. Now mm. that's not to say, and I want to speak to the anxiety of this a little bit because there are times when you have a specific scheduled time that you're going to do something or you should be doing something, mm. but let's say mm. you're just really sick and you can't do it and stuff like right. you. And I've seen it multiple times. I mean, Max, you had it like not too long ago. I was right. sick one, like, for for one of the stream six streams not too long ago and mm -hmm. we you know and, and there's another colorist that i follow that like had to cancel his live stream as well that he does every friday and right. i remember like being in the rooms um chatting with other people and talking and then we realized that like oh he can't make it because he's uh he, he had covid or something so he wasn't able to he wasn't able to do it and there's an aspect of this that you know if somebody doesn't follow through like yeah the the chat is disappointed but like if you have a reason like that you're sick and you can't physically be there because it would be unhealthy for you to be able to do so are people going to be disappointed yeah sure but they're not going to think of you any less because of it i want to stress that point enough is uh, people are not good. going people are not going to hate on you they're not going to be um, barraging you with like, why aren't you there when you said you'd be there? Like people, especially the ones that are your community members, the people that you've built a rapport with are going to be the most understanding, a lot more understanding than you, I think you would ever think they would be. Um, so true. So that's the, that's the part of like, yes, you need to be consistent, but if there's a time when you can't physically be there, your community will be okay. And they will, we rely on you and yeah. Yeah. It's just to say that I know we're going to talk about that more next week too. Right. Like for people that's, who are interested in that conversation or uh, whenever the next, the next episode, I know that that's like on the talking points of things we're going to be talking about with Spoo and about just those ideas about, you know, your community, you know, how they have your back more than you think, you know, and, and, and just, just that aspect, as far as this yeah. is concerned for like, um, 
uh, schedule. I think when you mention trust, that is huge. And that's yeah. something where if you if you keep promising, I'm going to show it Monday at four and then uh, Monday at four comes and goes. And, you know, maybe you have a small community, maybe, you know, it's it's two, three, four, five, 10, 20, 50 people, whatever it is. Um, and, and they're like, hey, where were you? Ah, oh, totally forgot. My bad. You do that again. And your community has shrunk automatically. Like yep. at that point, you haven't delivered on on an outset promise um, without an excuse. Like, or or even if you're sick, what if you're sick every Monday at four and you stream every Monday <laughs> at four? Well, one time to change your schedule. Like, don't don't right. stream when you're sick. Like, if if that's if that's the anomaly. But it's just to say, like, trust is valuable, and trust is built by delivering on the promise of consistency if yeah. you say you're going to stream twice a week do it if you say you're going to stream at six twice a week do it if that isn't working for you and you find yourself being late change it to six fifteen. do whatever you have to do to set up long-term success by being consistent and when you show up and how much you fulfill on your promises right 100 percent. yeah it's it, it's vital it is absolutely vital uh and there's no there's no trick to this. I, I mean, uh, that, that's something too. As far as far as the schedule, there's, there's not no like some like, algorithm. <laughs> yeah, there's no there's no mystery to this. Like it's literally just like you set set your set your gig and then show up. That, that's all there is to it. It literally that alone will create numbers that yeah. will generate followership. It will generate a community because they know I can expect you to be live. At these times, are you yeah. streaming to one, two, three people at first? Yeah, especially if you're doing a big game, Fortnite, Rocket League, League of Legends. Like these are oversaturated markets. So if you're if you're hopping into those, yeah, it's probably going to be tough to gain traction in these large places, which is something we'll be talking about in a future episode in the season. I was just going to say, like, if, if you're one of those people, it's just like, how do I overcome the barrier of streaming to zero people? Like, please tune in next time, because I, yeah. I, I know Spoo is going to have some great things to say about that. Yeah, like no joke, right? Like building yeah. these things out, you know, it, it's more to say like, so just in a vacuum, create a schedule, stick to it. And if your schedule doesn't work for you, if you're finding it hard to stick to your own schedule, figure out if you A, want to be streaming and B, change your schedule to fit the way in which you want to stream. And there's going to be times where it's tough. There's going right. to be times where that's really difficult. There are times where I, I have I have left my stream. I'm not kidding. Okay. I am a full-time video editor and content creator right now. That's why I do full-time. In my history game to this point, I have built a community. And then without warning, I have taken my PC and put it in the closet for a year. I didn't tell anybody in my community I was doing it. I just did it. That is the most shoot yourself in the foot inconsistency you can possibly do. I took a whole bunch of people who relied on me and I said, I can't do this. And it was because I had mental health and self-care things that I was not doing at the time. I was getting too inundated with all the crap. I was looking way too much at way too many things and way too many numbers. And I got overwhelmed and overly anxious. And I just pieced out on a whole bunch of people. The reason I bring that up is not to say that you should do that. It's to, <laughs> it's to say that like you, you like I've made that I made that mistake and you can uh, it's about improving growth day by day, week by week, month by month. Just allow yourself the process. Some everybody's journey is different. Uh, and somehow my journey, you know, it's, it's, I can't believe that I did that, but I did do that. That is a <laughs> real thing. You can look at my history and you can see that that's what happened. I just yep. totally vanished off the was, face of the planet. I don't recommend I don't it. That. Nope. Yeah. Don't do it's, it. <laughs> don't do it. Def, don't do that. Definitely not the, <laughs> not advantageous for a good, uh, good community. So. <laughs> no. And then, but then what happened is I came back and then I, I, I applied consistency to content to scheduling and I regrew a new community that had some people coming back being like, Oh my gosh, I'm so glad to see you again. Yeah. But then a lot of people who I have never seen and might never see for the rest of my life, people who were in my stream every single day that I was streaming, who I broke that connection of trust with and they're no longer there. So you, you can, I mean, there's always, it's just to say that there's always opportunity to grow a stream, but trust and consistency is vital to that. And if you betray that trust, people's patience is only going to go so far because guess right. what? There's another streamer. 
there's another streamer that's going to be offering the game, that's going to be offering the content, that's going to be offering something. Develop the personal connection by showing that you're trustworthy. That's the best, absolute best thing, besides having good audio, to to having a successful stream. It really is. I cannot reiterate enough. It's crazy how much consistency and trust uh, and I mean, I think we're going to talk about, you know, community authenticity, these yes. kind of things like in the next episode. So we don't get to get into that too much. But man, like, tr- I, I don't even know now. And I feel like I'm rambling. But at the same time, <laughs> I cannot reiterate how important it is because my personal experience, I, I did something that other people don't do. I, I left. I just pieced out, you know, it, it's yep. it just like and you can rebuild though you can rebuild you can the get back in if you yeah. make a mistake like just just keep forward thinking forward thinking yeah failing forward is is basically the the summary for that the whole entire thing because you could you can be at the point where you feel like you had this community and now you've lost it like i think a lot of streamers that have started to make it um even like a chief twitch partner Mm-hmm. didn't didn't stick with it once they saw those numbers go down because they did the whole like partner push thing and then once they got partner they didn't do anything with that um so then they just went went back down and they didn't push through those adversities of having that time where they they actually did fail to an extent but mm. the key, the key thing to remember mm. with that is like you're even if that happens even if you lose a part of your community, even if you your content is uh, lost in some sort of way, I don't know, like you move or something, and you have to rebuild stuff from scratch, like it's okay to fall behind, or it's okay to fall down, and it's okay to fail at some points, because as long as you're failing forward, then you're constantly in a mindset of like, okay, I did that wrong, I'm not going to make that mistake again, and my content is going to be better because of it. It's it's always the mind like it's always a shift of mindset of being better with um, wherever you're at. You're always improving. You're going to make mistakes. You are going to fail. Like know when you start this, you will fail in a lot of areas, and that is okay. I want to stress that super hard. It is always always okay to fail it's not okay to let that failure define your content and define who you are because it is not you you are not your past you are who you're going to be yeah and we could we could even loop this back in um to what we were talking about before so when we're talking about like uh you know learning as a mindset like you're never you're never actually like Failure is only it's a failure is just an opportunity to learn. If you have a learning mindset and you make a mistake, you don't it's it's like, okay, yeah, I could have done that different. But let's use this as a learning opportunity to say, okay, like, how would I have done that differently? Right. Um, the 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 other thing here is just it's it shows the power of consistency and trust in that if if you're able if you have a community of people who rely on you for content or who you really connect with. Uh, and then you abandon them like 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 <laughs> I, I mean, it's an extreme example, but I'm just using it because it, it actually happen. is. Yeah, like it people happen. do it. P- people do it. They do that. Um, you know, you, you can re you can build a new community or those people will come back when they see like, you know, and we'll talk about community, you know, in next in, in, the, in episode three. Uh, but they'll they'll support you. If they see growth, if they see if they see that ability to to engage in trust, maybe you've had right. you know that mistake happen, yeah. But it's okay. Definitely. It's okay. Uh, there there is there is one other thing. There is a tip to content schedule. There is one. I I thought of one. There's yeah. a trick. There's a trick to this. Know your limits. Don't stream <laughs> eighty hours a week. Don't 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 come, do don't come down right. in it because don't. then that's the worst thing you could possibly do. Okay, this is. Oh, I really man. believe this. I truly believe this as somebody who has dealt with burnout, as somebody who has watched streamer after streamer after streamer after content creator stop quit leave. They and, and every <laughs> single time, you know what the breaking point was? They burned. Out. Out, they right. said, if I stream more, if I make more, if I do more, then I will have more success. Success didn't follow. They pieced out because they overdid their limit. It wasn't about the quantity. It wasn't about being live 12 hours a day, seven days a week for their entire life. It was about <laughs> what they were offering. It was about the trust and it was about the connection. Please yep. know your limits. That's the number one thing that I could say. 
about yeah. getting into content, right? And that really brings it back full circle to what we almost not quite opened with, but it was close to the beginning where we were talking about how numbers follow. They're not the primary driver um, that you, like you yourself are the driver. So like chasing hours is another number. Like hours are just a number. Mm. Viewers mm. are just a number. Um, you are not a number. Ooh, you are your ooh. content creator. Put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Put it on a t-shirt, do it. I'll buy it. <laughs> It'll That's sell so at a good. Walmart somewhere, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Or like, yeah, one of the, just one of those like random brands that you see like Fred Meyer apparently bought this brand out cuz all their clothes have this logo on them now. Okay, right. that's cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. th- that's, that's something that, yeah, like just, uh, just give you, give yourself, give yourself a break. Like I would yeah. say, I would even say like the tip would be don't stream in a vacuum, stream an event, like, yeah. like plan, <laughs> like I, hi, tonight is an event that I am streaming. Hi, I am new streamer, uh, one, two, three. And tonight I'm going to try to beat this level in five minutes, you know, or something. And then it's yeah. like, now we have an event for the next two hours. I'm doing this. And then that way you have a two hour event, you give it your all, and then you can repurpose that content. You can cycle that back out, or you can say, okay, I don't need to repurpose that. That was the event. Let's look at the next event. Streaming a lot of hours for a long period of time. If you're able to do it, great. If you know that you don't have that limit, that ceiling doesn't exist for you, rock and roll. Shoot for the moon or the stars or Jupiter. Wait, <laughs> Jupiter is closer than the stars. That was awkward. I went I went from the moon to the depth of space and then back into our solar system. Um that's that's, full whip, that's whiplash. <laughs> full sphere, which full is sphere. what well, yeah, we're planets are, now. Tim. Okay. Come on. Well, let's let's start let's, talking about the fourth dimension now. Um, let's start yeah, let's go into uh some what? astrobiology <laughs> and we can talk about we can talk about Ast- the metaphysics Wait, and we can get into Don't you more. mean astronomy? <laughs> no, I, uh, I I meant whatever I said. Okay, astrobiology. Oh, okay. I have a goldfish brain. Okay. <laughs> but the goldfish, well, <laughs> which is exactly what you want to hear about somebody who's on a podcast trying to give you advice about what to do in content is yeah. I have a goldfish brain. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, uh, take it. T- how about this? Uh, if I can do it, you can too. Okay, seriously. Yeah, there you go. Um, there you, you know, go. Y- yeah, yeah. Like, like if, if you are really passionate about getting into content, okay, you might think it's oversaturated. Somebody's already done it. No, don't listen to that. That's doubt. That's doubt. Yeah. Get into it. Take the easiest steps forward, one step at a time. Dip your toe in. And, and and go for it and and take these slow steps. And of course, as we've mentioned, like at the beginning of the show and otherwise, reach out. Stream six is here as a resource, but also like we are we are just people, you know, we're humans just like you who have just worked our way through all these different things to arrive at where we're at right now. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're eight or 80. Well, don't stream if you're eight. But but if you're <laughs> it's you against know, TOS, <laughs> yeah, because that, that actually yeah, that's not that's, that's not viable. But you know, you get the point. You get the point. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, geez, uh, Tim. Okay, what's the camera? All right, what's your budget? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and that ends the podcast episode. Yeah, yeah. No, no, fake, fake right. ending, fake ending. Okay, yeah, fake uh, ending. <laughs> let's say budget. Like somebody is like, okay, I don't have a lot. I don't have a yeah, lot. Yeah. Like, what is that entry level? Yeah, generally, got? general, generally speaking, when it comes to a webcam, honestly, you really don't need a lot. Um, entry level for webcams, can, you can typically find some for fifty bucks or less. Like, or mm. even as simple as your phone here like if you're listening to this on spotify you're not seeing me raise up a Mm. phone but i'm holding up a phone because you know for visual purposes um but your phone can be used as a webcam there's multiple ways to do that but that would be the most cost effective way because vast majority of people that are streaming also have a smartphone so you can utilize that but you can also use like a simple logitech c920 webcam like in terms of webcams you really don't need to scale up that high there's there's such a very minor increase in something like a C920 to something that has like all the uh, webcams are starting to get a little crazy now because they've basically hit a threshold of how much image quality they have. So they're trying to come yeah. up with new stuff that they want to be able to to insert into it. Uh, just to just to go ahead and plug, like guess who's using a C922 camera right now? The year you if go. you're if you're watching the video, like that's that's what I'm using. I've used it for like for years. And I have, you know, and I'm just I'm cruising along. You know, it's it once again, audio, right? I spend right. more money I spend more money on microphones than I have on any other, I think, piece of tech. And besides that's why the that, actual and that's PC. why that matters, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 
Um, so yeah, so a basic webcam like that, and honestly, what's more important than the camera itself is your lighting, um, mm. because you could mm. you could have a mm. really expensive like thousands thousands of dollars worth of a camera and lenses, and if you don't have the lighting for it, it's going to look terrible. And you can make hmm. a scene. You could make a C920 look better than an expensive camera if you have good lighting, because lighting is the it, lighting is king. Like lighting is always more important than the camera that you're using. Sure, there's like fine details that you can get out of a camera, like a real camera that you can't get out of a webcam, but those aren't the details that are going to to have the biggest impact. Which is why the lighting is mm. the, the most important part of it. Um, yeah, that's so good. It's so, so, good. so like a C920, uh, when you're ready to upgrade your content and you need something more than a webcam, like obviously you still have your phone for a majority of your content, but when it comes to mirrorless cameras, you you know there's a bunch of people, a bunch of cameras that people recommend, and a bunch of many manufacturers that are you know, pushing all of these different new technologies out, and it's so hard to stay on top of everything because everything is changing so fast. Um, generally, the brands that I've gone with, and again, I'm not like as much as everybody thinks I am. I'm not actually a brand loyalist. <laughs> um, yeah, but the the. The brand that I recommend most commonly is Fujifilm, actually. So the one that I'm using that you're, if you're watching this, or you're seeing right now, this is the Fujifilm X-T3. Um, I believe Bax has one of those as well. I have two of them I because I use them for a lot of my professional work. Uh, but that's one of those cases where I use, I got one of them uh, because I use it for professional work, and that's what works for me. So in terms of cam camera manufacturers, like obviously there's a lot of people that push Canon and Sony, and because those are the big players, are the ones that have the most marketing money. Honestly, I think <laughs> I think they people go to them because of the the marketing. I'm not saying they're they're bad cameras to use, but in terms of like what you get for your value and the user experience, there's you're going to run into more bottlenecks, I would say, than you would with uh, something like Fujifilm that you know they have. Um, the dials on top for the for your ISO and your shutter speed and stuff. So like the the user experience feels a lot more retro and it's a lot more of a fun user experience. And there's not as much of a learning curve with it, um, but it also just gets you like really good images right out of the gate, uh, as opposed to some other some other brands like Sony that, <laughs> let's face it, uh, I kind of cringe every time I see somebody that has like greenish yellow fringing on their on their skin tone and yeah mm. that's a, but anyways mm. um, the colorist in you comes out the, the one color the, the color, the color yes. scientist yes yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um so yeah so but like Fujifilm and Panasonic even has some some good options and I could go into the the minute details if you have any like really specific questions on on all this stuff like feel free to to hit us up I'd be glad to answer any questions you have um but that's that's kind of where I go and like a, as a good starting camera like the my most common one I recommend is the Fujifilm X-T20 um, you can typically find it used uh, with a lens like I've seen it go for under 400 bucks and again we're getting into like the when you start realizing that your content needs more than just a webcam and you actually are profiting from this um, yeah. that's what that can go towards uh, mm. which is a whole another conversation um, but that is to say that like in any given scenario, your lighting is going to make all the difference. Like when it when it really comes down to it, um, having a solid uh, it, like if you just need to start with a like a light bulb in front of a cheap manufacturer's softbox in front of it, like use that. There are lots of ways to uh, to create um, a lighting aesthetic that feels soft, that's uh, that's aesthetically pleasing. Uh, just mm -hmm. everybody, please stop doing the this the small LED panels on both sides. You need to make yourself look really flat. I'm tired of that aesthetic. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> doesn't work. Uh, I could I could go on about how oh. it just it just bothers me to no end because it's like it, everybody looks the same and it looks flat. There's nothing appealing about that. that look. That's why I have what I do. <laughs> I don't have any lights on this side actually. Um, mm. But yeah, like in terms of lighting, um, like LED panels are fine, but I actually prefer uh, COB lighting, which are, they're like, they look like spotlights, but they're the ones you attach a softbox onto. Um, mm. And those provide a lot more 
of an output, like a lot higher output, a lot higher, um, uh, a lot higher light quality, and you get a lot more soft light out of it with a soft box. And it's just, it's a lot easier to get a pleasant looking image out of it as opposed to like putting some harsh LED panels up. Yeah, and, I feel you there. And then it hits, it hits everything in your background too. And it's really hard to contain, especially if you're in a small room. Mm. Um, but no. yeah, so, so, so lighting, lighting is, I'm, lighting lighting, is yeah. very important. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean that, and, and, and that's, you know, and that, that's something that, you know, take, the, take that home with you. So, you know, you yeah. get, get the microphone, uh, you know, use whatever microphone you have, but, you know, focus on that as your first upgrade, look at your video camera and then, you know, fi- use your phone. If you need to use whatever it is, there's tutorials all over the place. YouTube university is amazing. Uh, yep. to just go on there and type in like how do I smartphone camera and then you know plug that in and then look for lighting look for lighting to make yourself uh, appear as professional but also like just well lit as possible because that's going to help your viewers interact with you see you for what you're doing see your facial expressions right. which is really important people want to see that face they want to see how you're reacting to what's happening and I think there's a reason we really didn't spend as much time on your camera and lighting setup even though that's like what I do for a living it's because it's it's not anywhere near the most important thing involving your content and starting up and getting and making sure you're creating stuff in the first place. Like this is all secondary to you and your content and who you are as a person. Mm, so perfect. Uh, well, with that being said, you know that's that. That sounds like a, that sounds like an episode. It sounds like an episode of a of a podcast. Um, that I, is, yeah, I'd listen to too. it. Yeah, <laughs> would you? That's great. That's Good great. Idea. You were a part of it. That's amazing. Right. Uh, yeah, so that, that is glad to be here. <laughs> uh, that's our show for the day. So uh, thank you, Tim. Appreciate it, man. Good yep. advice as always. Good discussion. Uh, and fantastic please, talking is with you as well. Mm, fantastic is a fun word to say, by the way. It is just it's fantastic. 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 Uh, <laughs> don't forget to follow Stream Six official on Twitch. Uh, any of the social media platforms as well. Stream Six is out there, and we would love to hear from you. If you have thoughts, feedback, concerns, questions, hit us up. We are not strangers. We are people in the world just like you, and we would love to talk. Unless you're an AI, uh, which is you know slowly building. Uh, so thank you so much once again. Uh, my name is uh, Sam Hall, otherwise known as Baxcast, and this has been a conversation with Tim Seneca, known as Camera Tim, on uh, online. Uh, it's been our pleasure to bring you some information that hopefully helps you get into content creation if that's something you're interested in. Check out the next episode. It's going to be a good one where we'll have guests spoo on to talk about community engagement and building. See you later.